Okay, um, you can see they have a basic flap and the three EDC tools that I'm planning to use. That's also one of my other uh, EDC tools. They have clips on it. And I thought, you know, it might be a good idea to have a pouch like a, a, a typical carpenter's pouch that has an actual piece to slide in clipped items like a tape measure or a sheetrock knife with a clip on it. So I took this little piece of leather that I cut off the longer piece and I'm literally going to put in some stitch lines in the middle, two of them to be exact, and I'm going to stitch them right onto that flap. Right here I'm stitching, uh, stamping the stitching holes so uh, that the, the flap of this EDC itself has an outside clip holder, if you will, that will uh, except up to three different areas for clips. As you can see here, I'm using my marking pencil to mark the stitching holes in the flap. And then the other ones will just stitch right along the uh, edge with the rest of the stitching. Now, I, what I was explaining there is I'm going to stitch one extra... Um, placing one extra hole on, on the ends of each line so that I can stitch over the, uh, the end of the, the, well, the clip holder edge. And you can see there the items with clips can then slide right into the, <clears throat> the little pocket created by it. Because there are items that I'm constantly using. Sheetrock knife, for instance. I always have that on a pocket because I'm always using a thing. Now, I thought about using a little battery in one of them so that I could just stick metal items to it. But I was a little bit worried that I'd end up with a, my cell phone getting screwed up by it or something. Because regular batteries don't work. You have to use, if you're working with leather, really good quality batteries. That usually means the earth metal batteries. And they'll screw up a phone, I believe, if you're not careful. So I'm stamping in letters. I decided to do a design on it. And I'm going to do something simple. I was planning to try and get these videos done before Father's Day. But it didn't work out. That's the way it goes sometimes. I got busy. So I'm literally stamping dad in letters. Now I thought, you know what? Letters are nice. It looks cool. It's great. But I'd kind of like to do something a little bit more with it. More than just, you know, the, the word dad. But that's where the basic uh, design is going to be. The, the word dad on it. Then I went ahead and thought, you know what, maybe I want to do a border stamp around the letters to sort of enhance them a little bit. Uh, as you can see, I chose the, this Celtic, it's basically a Celtic braid uh, stamp that I have. If I'm being honest, these stamps are not very good. Uh, the, the metal and, and the construction is great, but there's a huge design flaw with these particular stamps. You're going to find this when you buy fill stamps or border stamps a lot. They just don't design them as well as you would like. And the problem with these particular stamps is that they have a little ridge right on the end. And that little ridge literally prevents you from doing a seamless stamp. Yes. Yeah, it does happen sometimes. I got a call right in the middle of the video. It never fails. So yeah, this border stamp has a design flaw in that there's little ridges on the, right on the edge. So that when you stamp, you'll see, when you look at the little stamp design, those little ridges create a perforation in the sections of braid. So you can see a visible mark between each stamp. Uh, believe me, I was extremely annoyed when I spent the money for these stamps just to see that there was a design flaw and that there was no way to stamp them seamlessly. So... Unfortunately, I really like the stamp design. The stamp design is great. I've tried to take a Dremel. I've tried a file. I've tried everything I can think of to try and sand down those stupid little ridges, but it just it hasn't worked for whatever reason. That metal or whatever they used is hardcore. Uh, well, good quality, just badly designed. Nevertheless, uh, you can see here I've got a neat little... Uh, box and when I realized that this uh, I just couldn't get that to look seamless I got to thinking about it and said you know nothing I do with that box is going to be perfect because of those lines and that you, 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 you this happens sometimes when you're in the middle of doing a design 
for a pattern that you don't have everything worked out on. I mean, you're literally just winging it as you go along, you know, because you're designing something custom for yourself or for someone else. And, you know, when you're doing something custom, there's usually no pattern for it. So what I decided to do when I got to this point, I'll share in just a little, the next section here you'll see. But uh, I do like the lettering itself. I think it looked really nice. I've got my design and I'm planning to, to do a two-tone color because I really like two-tone coloring whenever I do a design. I, it really helps with a contrast. And when you're doing a purist method, for whatever reason, certain leathers are really good with two-tone. Some aren't. I don't know what it is about chromium, the white leather. It doesn't like two-tone. It, it just bleeds all over the place. But uh, the veg tan uh, generally uh, does fairly well with two-tone dyeing for some reason. And you know, unfortunately, you start with a tan. You know, there's no way around it. It's always this color for the most part. But you can see here what I decided to do with that box. It's just kind of, well, screwed up. Those lines just, I, I couldn't let them go. They were just getting, they were bothering me. Because I literally took what they call a fill stamp with little tiny holes. It creates like little pockets. And it's usually a filler a stamp that you use to fill up a space that looks bare or blank or plain otherwise. And I'm literally going to try to stamp the box out of it by stamping you know this little fill pattern all over the edges of the box as close to the design and the letters as I can in the hopes of removing the the flaws of the marks the marked lines um, honestly uh, I was a little lazy on this part <laughs> I just uh, when a design doesn't work sometimes you're like uh, you have two choices. You just toss it and start over and just say, forget doing the design. Because with a clip holder, you know it's going to happen. Every time you put an EDC tool and clip it onto that thing, it's going to just rub right up against that pattern anyway. This EDC pattern on that looks really cool to begin with. Within several months, uh, it's going to be unrecognizable. It, it's the problem with taking a practical pouch, something that's literally meant to be used every single day, and then trying to uh, incorporate a design element to it, particularly for something for tools. That's why when you buy these carpenter's pouches, they don't have this really cool Italian lettering and you know fancy designs, because um, if you've ever seen a carpenter's pouch after about four or five months, it looks like they've run over it several times, dropped it from a skyscraper, uh, maybe drug it behind their car. Uh, I mean, there's literally holes in it. Like they've been dropping acid inside the pockets and it's burned holes through it. Uh, it they just, and it never fails. Every carpenter's pouch I've ever seen has a bunch of accumulation of crap in the bottom of it too. Whether it's sawdust or oil or there's little pock marks everywhere. Uh, you know, it just, it's virtually impossible to make a practical pouch for carpentry, construction, EDC, to look awesome and great indefinitely. I just don't see it as possible, unless you're gonna make it out of metal. And that kind of defeats the point, metal's just too heavy. I mean, maybe there's somebody out there that's got this cool idea for creating, uh, you know, a little slick a titanium pouch or something, and, you know, they're able to make it for only about an ounce or two, but, I just don't see anyone doing that. It's overkill. Okay, so I'm just finishing up this now. Uh, I've stamped all of the, of the little uh, lines and everything out of there. I'm literally now going to dye the outside black. Uh, this is tedious work. Well, that's why I'm doing all this in time lapse. I, I realized after the first series, just to make a, a little pouch, it was like hour long videos that nobody wants to watch, you know? This guy's got to be the worst video maker on the planet or something, you know? He doesn't get that people don't want to watch someone stamp for an hour straight. Well, I do. I get it. You know, and I'm different. When I started out, man, I, I was watching all the comprehensive stuff. Forget all the other time-lapse stuff. For me, uh, I wanted to see the mistakes that you, you can make. I wanted to see uh, the, any kind of tips or tricks they mentioned in the course of the video. Just to find out that these guys that were doing these videos, they'll do time lapse, throw some music score on it, 
and they don't say a word. The whole time they don't say, you know, anything about their experience, why they're doing it, you know, nothing. And it's just listening to classical music or rock band for however long that video is, and you don't really get the experience of what that leather worker has learned. Even an amateur has something to say, in my opinion. Anyway, so you can see I'm starting with the outline of the design uh of the, the basically the box that I removed and you'll find black hides a lot of stuff that's the beauty of black uh, there really is a beautiful thing to incorporate black as one of the colors because uh, when I get done with this black you're not going to be able to tell that uh, that stamp was a piece of crap and it made all these lines it, it, you know, it's not going to be that recognizable which is a, one of the things I like about doing two tone and using one of them as black so there's the basic outline of the box or the Celtic pattern. Now I got to go and do the fill in around the letters. And this can be a little bit tricky, to be honest with you. Sometimes uh, the detail work really requires a magnifying lamp. I have to use a magnifying lamp in order to be able to do the detailed stuff. Thankfully, this one was fairly straightforward. Uh, I didn't have to worry too much about it. So. Again, I was going to try to do this for Father's Day, and I missed the mark by, what, two or three weeks? Hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking of starting my next project. When I finish this, should be about a week. And then the next one I'm planning to do, I'm going to do some kind of a modular cell phone case design for travel. After that, I'm actually, I have this idea for a bag that I thought would be really cool that I think some people would be really interested in. It's got a Halloween theme to it. I love the Halloween stuff. I love some of the cool Halloween designs. Like that one gal has this coffin made out of leather. That is cool. I mean, it really looks cool the way she did that. You had this gal that did a dragon out of leather. That was really neat looking. Um, I, I just think it's neat. So I have this idea for a Halloween themed bag that I think would be really neat to make. Um, and the beauty of doing vector is that you can create a pattern that can literally be just easily downsized. So I finished the D here. I'm now working on the A, just slowly working around those letters. Uh, I, I'm not overly concerned about it being perfect. I'll be honest with you on this particular one, and I'll tell you why. In two or three months, using this every single day, those letters and that design is going to be unrecognizable, unfortunately. It looks cool. For those weekend warriors that aren't going to actually use an EDC pouch, they're just going to, they want to have one, you know, to say they have it, and then they just set it on the shelf somewhere. Like people who own guns and never shoot them. <laughs> I actually use an EDC pouch, and that's why I'm making it. In fact, that's my suggestion to anybody who's interested in doing leather. Do what you really need. Make what you actually need to have. If you're going to go to all the effort to make something custom, uh, incorporate your own ideas and your own artistry into it, make something you're going to use that you've been wanting to have that you can't get. Whether it's a custom sheath for a knife, a custom holster for your gun, in this case, a custom uh, EDC pouch. Uh, I mean, there are certain tools that I wanted to carry, and you can't buy a pouch that's for just specific tools. They almost always have an extra pouch you don't need, or they don't have an, uh, the extra pouch you do need. Because you know, it's really hard to gauge what one particular person does with their EDC items. Everyone has their own idea about what's the ideal. I wanted to be able to have a socket set, a screwdriver set, and then a multi-tool. That was my general thing. And then I wanted a place to put a sheetrock knife, tape measure, and some kind of pencil. And then a place to put extensions. That was my general idea. And that's what I'm shooting for. If I can, if I can accomplish all of those things, incorporate a solution for all of that, and be able to slap it onto my belt on and off without having to pull the belt off, I'm good. So there you go. I'm now doing the detailed work inside of the braid. I'm just almost done. When I'm done with this, I will uh, take this as well as the, the actual pouch pattern that I created, and I'll smear mink oil all over it. So there you have it. Thanks for watching.